Hey guys, it's Leo Kujem and welcome to another video. Today, we'll be looking at what it would be like if by some miraculous reason I worked at Cartoon Network and were asked to lead a Ben 10 reboot, since the one we have right now is not so great. So with that said, let's get into it. So many different ways to tell a story, but that's what makes them so interesting. You can never predict how they're going to turn out. In a world where humans and aliens live in harmony on our planet Earth, a young boy named Ben Tennyson has always been the biggest loser. Subpar grades, always being picked on, and just general life that sucks for a 10 year old kid. But despite all of that, he hopes to keep a good morale and hopes that one day he'll be accepted into the family business, being a plumber. Plumbers are an intergalactic police force which are dedicated to protecting the galaxy from any threats that could be out there in the stars. Ben's grandfather, Max Tennyson, was one of the greatest plumbers of all time, having bested a lot of threats out there including the mighty Vilgax, an alien warlord who had conquered ten worlds and continued on his warpath all over the galaxy, only to be stopped by Max's team of plumbers, consisting of himself, his then-girlfriend at the time, Verdona, Myax, Devin Levin, Wes Green, and Rookmar, Rook's great-grandmother. Naturally, because of this connection, all the families are rather close, and it had become a family tradition to meet up every year on an unofficial gathering of sorts. When they all had kids, it turned into them having a cookout with them every summer. And now, with the grandchildren, since Max is old and retired, he decided that an intergalactic road trip would be a fun excuse to get the kids to see different worlds and bond and stuff like that. So that would bring out our main characters in their first episode at a very familiar campsite, beginning things with the famed episode, and then there were ten. There we meet our characters. First up, we have Ben Tennyson, your average kid that no one understands. He's been growing up on Earth, living life as your average dweeb. Young, adventurous, and full of life, he wants nothing more than to be a plumber like his grandparents before him even if his parents don't exactly approve of it. Regardless, being 10, he's more than excited to spend the summer with his grandfather, Max Tennyson. Then we have Max Tennyson. As previously mentioned, he was the agent that led the team that took down Vilgax back in the day. With that, he became a renowned plumber, earning the rank of Magister and becoming the head of the Plumber's Earth Division, before retiring and looking towards a life that was more oriented to family and friends. He's taking these kids on a road trip, and despite being their grandfather in the case of Ben and his cousin, comes to be more of a father figure to all of them. Gwen Tennyson. While she was born human, it was discovered very early on in her life that she possessed magical abilities, much like her grandmother Verdona. It's because of that that her grandmother, who had been waiting forever for another sorceress to appear in the family, immediately took Gwen under her wing to harness her abilities. Because of that, she has spent most of her life in a realm parallel to our own, known as Ledger Domain, where magic comes from and is most powerful. Learning magic all her life has given Gwen a pretty sturdy grip on her powers and is more than adept in combat. And intelligence to boot? Young Gwen Tennyson is the entire package. When she's old enough, she wants to be a plumber much like her grandparents before her. She loves her grandfather, and as for Ben? They're on rather awkward footing since most of his life, Gwen has been away to Ledger Domain and has always been busy. Her family presence has mostly been absence in favor of learning magic with her grandmother, making Ben and Gwen almost strangers to one another. But over the course of the series, they grow closer to one another and gain a relationship more akin to that to the actual reboots Ben and Gwen. Gwen being intelligent and being skilled in magic has one thing about her. She's never really had a chance to be a kid. She's awkward and hasn't really experienced much outside of magic. For Gwen, her plot would be learning to come out of her shell and be a little more familiar with the universe around her. Then we have Kevin Levin, a young mutant boy who has the ability to absorb energy. Unfortunately for him, Kevin's father, Devin Levin, died early in his life. Growing up without a father, he became a juvenile delinquent, much to his mother's dismay. He's always been a problem child. 
Kevin Levin had inherited his father's abilities to absorb energy and solid matter around him, making him even more dangerous than your average punk. Usually he doesn't go on the big surrogate family outings, however this year, Kevin's mother makes sure Kevin comes along with them much to his displeasure. In the beginning, Kevin's pretty distrusting and kind of an edgy, angsty kid towards everyone and is always trying to cause trouble wherever in the galaxy that they go. He doesn't really like anybody at first, and especially makes fun of Ben for being a nobody with no powers. Finally, rounding out the group of kids, we have Rook Blanco, the oldest of the group and a descendant of Rook Mar. Born and raised on the planet of Ravana Gander, Rook Blanco has only known the simple farm life of the planet. However, one thing that has been very constant in his life was his late great-grandmother, who had been a plumber and had saved the galaxy from Vilgax with the help of her friends. It's why that every night he would study up on the plumbers and look to the stars in hopes of protecting the galaxy before him. While Rook's family rarely makes an appearance at the whole surrogate family meetings due to their simple lifestyle, there are a few exceptions with the occasional meeting on the insistence of Max. Because of this, Ben has occasionally met Rook, and each time they have met, they have been on relatively good terms. As for Gwen, they make pretty fast friends, both being intelligent and having the same types of interests, particularly in this pursuit of knowledge. There would be a minor subplot of Rook trying to learn magic from Gwen, but ultimately failing. As for Kevin, he doesn't quite understand why he dislikes him and the others, and insists that he can come to be a good person. Rook would be very skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat and eventually build his own weapon, the Proto-Tool. With that being said, that's your main cast, and now it is time to tell their story. It would begin with a two-part episode, and then there were ten, parts one and two. The episode would begin with Ben as he is in school, doing some sort of test like in the original episode. He's narrating like he did in the beginning and end of Destroy All Aliens. He introduces his life and what the plumbers are and all that jazz, and all with the animation of him doing the test. And class would be out of session, beginning the summer with Ben racing out and the confrontation with Cash and JT. Basically the original beginning of the episode with the little opening monologue. And of course, his grandpa would show up and he'd get in the RV. Ben would be excited for the space road trip and the best summer ever and all that jazz with his grandpa. Max would be happy with Ben's excitement and everything, and it's then when it's revealed that they have to get the others. Ben is confused by this, and it's then when it's revealed that they'll have to get the others before they take off. They pick up Kevin first. We have a little bit of a not-so-friendly conversation with Ben, while Grandpa Max has a short conversation with his mother, promising that he'll get Kevin sorted out. Then, a short drive scene, ending with them arriving at a spaceport to pick up Rook, who has just arrived from the Ravana Gander. He's there with his father, who is still against the trip, but has buckled under. He's very insistent that Max keep him safe, to which he agrees. And with that, the three boys are situated and are just about ready to leave when Verdona appears and drops off a rather annoyed Gwen, who doesn't really want to be there. Verdona argues that Gwen has learned a lot of magic, but she needs something like this if she wants to get better, and argues that how one is supposed to be a plumber without having seen the stars themselves. And that's how Gwen ends up on this trip, meeting the three boys, and Verdona leaves, and that's when they take off, revealing the rust bucket to be able to travel in space, much like the original, and thereby ending part one of my version, and then there were ten. Part two would open with them landing at their first destination, a sparsely wooded planet that has multiple campsites for tourists and such. We have banter, banter, banter between the characters so you can get to know more of their rebooted personalities, and then Ben goes off to take a walk and blow some steam. Meanwhile, up in the stars we have a space battle with none other than Myax and Vilgax. They fight, 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 Myax loses, a very mechanical Vilgax gets most of his mechanical body destroyed, and what's left of his organic body is put in a tube, and the Omnitrix is sent away to wherever. Meanwhile, Ben is walking, annoyed with Gwen and Kevin being on the trip, and sort of but less miffed that Rook is there too, and then we get BAM! The pod flies towards Ben and everything, and we know how the classic scene goes. And then there were 10. 
The episode would go down exactly as it did. They discover that Ben can transform into aliens with the Omnitrix. Then, Vilgax attacks with some drones. Of course, Gwen, thinking she's the only one who has powers to fight, says she'll handle it, but of course, Kevin gets into the fight anyways. Then so does Rook. And finally, Ben, who kind of steals the show with another alien form. And the episode would end on Ben saying that... I think this is gonna be the best summer ever. And with that, the plot would begin of growing bonds with each other. While most of the focus would be on Ben, you'd have a few episodes that are focused on one of the other kids in the Core 4 and developing their characters. The summer road trip across the stars would be a story to remember, as Ben and co. discover what it truly means to be a plumber, and that hey, they've got each other. Vilgax would be the main villain of the first season, playing it safe with a variation of the first Ben 10 story arc of discovery and eventual confrontation with him. And we'd have some one-off episodes with villains new and old, such as Hex and Charmcaster, who would be some of Gwen's rivals from Ledger Domain, or even Arjit, who tries to steal the Rust Bucket or something. And we'd have allies show up too, in the same sort of deal, with Kai Green eventually being introduced at some point, and traveling with them as well. Other story arcs that would be fun to toy with in the future, after the initial Vilgax arc, would be a variation of Ultimate Kevin and the Absolute Power arc, finish off Kevin's development, discovering Azmuth and the secret of the Omnitrix, and who knows what other sorts of stuff that could come from this sort of thing. But story aside, it's finally time to talk about the most important thing in the show, the aliens. What would Ben's initial playlist be at the beginning of the series? I've taken it upon myself to look through all of the aliens, and have decided that this would be a good set of Ben's initial reboot playlist. Heat Blast, Forearms, Diamond Head, Accelerate, Stink Fly, Spider Monkey, Water Hazard, Jury Rig, Crash Hopper, and Ball Weevil. I chose these as a pretty balanced list, with the likes of Cannonbolt, Upchuck, Ripjaws, Big Chill, Swampfire, Wrath, Terraspin, Amphibian, Chameleon, Pesky Dusk, Kickin' Hawk, Feedback, and more as unlockables. But at the end of the day, my version of the Ben 10 reboot would be about a kid and his extended family going on a road trip around the galaxy, not only discovering more about the universe, but about themselves as well. It would have its action, its adventure, family, and all of that jazz. But yeah, that's my version of a Ben 10 reboot. What do you think? Do you love it? Do you hate it? What would you do if you were rebooting Ben 10? Let me know in the comments below, and thanks so much for watching! If you like this video and want to hear more from the Lyoko Gem, then please like, subscribe, and follow my social media at Tumblr, Twitter, and Discord, all linked below. But, thanks so much for watching, and with all of that being said, this has been the Lyoko Gem, a warpin' out.